Thank you, Aaron. Over the next 18 minutes, we're going to change. Each one of us will change, and what I'm going to be talking about is change. Over this next 18 minutes, in Australia, we'll be throwing out something like 700 computers or TVs under the tips. We'll be recycling maybe 70 in the next 18 minutes. In the next 18 minutes, we will throw out many, many tons of food that we've purchased and now find we don't want and we don't need. In the next 18 minutes, there will be many elderly people sitting in their nursing homes, wondering if someone will come and say hello to them. We'll give them a minute of their time, a moment of their consideration, care. During the next 18 minutes, Children, probably only a couple in Tasmania, will leave their home and not go back. Tonight, there will be a discussion in Tasmania on the number of homeless people and what can be done about it. Do we care? Do we care enough? There is a change occurring. And change is one of those things that can be either very tiny, like walking out of the room into another room. Change can be something much greater, like changing your whole circumstance, meeting a new person, falling in love, falling out of love, having a child. Or change can be something even greater, again, that's occurring that you I don't even know it's happening, but it's happening within all of society. It's happening within every part of the world. It's, it's, a, it's a profound change. It doesn't happen often, but it is happening now. It's like a tsunami. You know, when you, 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 if you're in the water, you don't really feel it, but it, it's happening, it's big, it's changing. And our tsunami is, is one of, I call it enlightenment, or understanding. And that's happening right as I'm talking and as you're listening. And while we're changing, it is changing. It is changing the way we think. It is the changing way our children are going to think. It is a change that is going to totally alter this world and deal with the problems that I mentioned at the beginning. There's a circle of change that's coming together for the first time to create this tsunami. And it brings together things such as organizations, for the first time, you know, we, we started creating organizations at the beginning of man as a way of hunting or a way of learning or a way of providing food for ourselves or being secure in some way. We started to organize. And now, if, if you just reflect for a moment, just a moment of this 18 minutes, how many organizations are you connected with? Schools, corner shops, city councils, the people who say to the your furniture, your food, they're all organizations, the sporting clubs. The religious bodies, the health organizations, the doctor's surgeries, the hospitals, 
the care, the organizations that we humans have formed to enable us to deal with this world in which we live. Organizations for the first time are being looked at as being a vehicle for change. Not just the human, but also the human structure, the organization. And the organizations that I speak about fit into three broad areas. One is the company, the commercial thing, that everybody seems to think about instantly as being an organization. But in my view, it is not the most important one. Because there's a second one that's called government. And it varies from little tiny bodies that care about one, each, one idea through to people like the United Nations. But they're all organizations and they have subgroups within them. And then the third group, which I believe is the most important and the one that we don't even recognize, is the, the non-profit organization or the non-commercial organization such as primary schools, secondary schools, universities, such as churches, such as um, the AFL, the VFL, the, the cricketing organizations, the pony clubs, the, from tiny, tiny little sporting bodies to huge ones. Think of the power they've got. Think of the influence they have on your lives. Think of the health people and the people involved in health and the effect that has on your life. The organizations in this third group are uh, ones that we need to look about and need to accept that we are part of their, our organization. We have created them. And the organization to for the, first, for the first time, really, is beginning to understand that they have a responsibility to be ethical. Up until now, we seem to have structured organizations to reach an objective without much care about ethics. It was something that, yeah, it was important. Let the churches worry about it. We don't have to. We don't care. But it's beginning. It is part of the tsunami. There is beginning an understanding that ethics is important. That ethics is essential. If we're going to have a world that we want to be in, that we want our children, our grandchildren to be part of, we have to have the ethics within the organization as an important part of it. It's got to be a balance the decisions made within the organization a balance to what it costs and how much profit you get from it. And one of the things, another part of this tsunami that's making it happen is an understanding that we have, every organization has things called stakeholders. Now I used to run a large factory here in Launceston many years ago and my stakeholders then were my shareholders, my staff. That's bad. They didn't even recognize others. But now there are bodies forming, there are individuals developing voices that are stakeholders that are influencing organizations. Think of the power in the universities of the student unions and how much power they had. 30 years ago, and how much power they have now. Think of the power of the academics, the structure of academics now to what they had 30, 40 years ago. Stakeholders are forming. There are shareholder groups forming in the United States that are insisting that their organization does things that are more beneficial to the environment or to social bodies, insisting on it and saying, we don't care if it reduces our, the, our dividend. That's not what we measure. You, you my organization, I'm a stakeholder of you, and I want you to be what I want you to be. I want you to be ethical. I want you to care. I'm a stakeholder. You're my organization. The ecology 
and the social structures of our community, we all know how badly we have treated them. We all know the damage we have caused. We pretend we don't. We deflect it as a responsibility, but not for long. And that change is occurring. That tsunami, you are a part of that. You are beginning to change. Just in the last, well actually just now, it's still happening, we are developing the most wonderful sets of standards through the International Standards Organization on corporate social responsibility. Three words have been never used 20 years ago. And now organizations right across the world are starting to understand they have a responsibility. They, they, they do have to respond. The standards are being written and there are also bodies forming that allow them to report on what they've done and now increasingly demanding they report on what they've done. The United Nations is now taking a part in it. Governments are taking a part in it. The Swedish government has said that none of their major bodies can exist unless they do an annual report on their sustainability. They must do it. part that's been missing in the tsunami is the action that the smaller people can take, the medium-sized company, the little companies, the little sporting bodies, the doctor surgeries, the, just something that's small enough that they can handle. That doesn't take long. It can be simple, it can be easy, and that's what we're calling the budget of care. It's a budget. But it's not budget like a profit and loss expense and income budget. It's a budget that is much more like a capital budget where you write down things you're wanting to achieve and you're going to do, uh, spend a lot of money on that's going to happen. And the budget of care is, is just that. It's about care. It's about you. Your organisation writing down, saying how they care for an environmental issue, how they care for a social issue, how they care for somebody who needs a, a job who doesn't have the means of, of achieving that. It has just three simple headings. The item, the stakeholder group who recommends, who wants that item to be considered, and the last one is a way of what they want to, to achieve before it is reviewed, probably generally in an annual structure. Simple as that. There need only be two items. One ecology, one social. That's all it needs. But if every organisation did it, can you imagine the effect it would have on this world? If every shop, every shop, every school, Every church. Every organisation. If they just cared for one environmental issue and one social issue, you start adding that together and boy, you've got change. My 18 minutes are about up. I wonder if you've changed. I wonder if you can go beyond knowing that there is a need to do something and doing it. Do you care enough? You are stakeholders. Every one of us is a stakeholder. We're a stakeholder of our butcher. We're a stakeholder of our <coughs> supermarket. We're a stakeholder of our dentist. We're a stakeholder of our fruit shop. We're a stakeholder of our 
school, of our children's school, of our sporting bodies, of our, of our TV companies. Are we, we're a stakeholder. You, I, we're all stakeholders of umpteen organisations. And each one of us can change that organisation through acting as a stakeholder and saying to them, I want you to do something that's about the care. If you care enough. Thank you.